Riri Wai Fox is a PhD student at Te Hiringa Waka Victoria University in Wellington is writing his thesis around the paradox of being Māori. So what does this mean? PhD student Riri Wai Fox, no Ngāti Kahungunu ki Wairirapa Ngāti Poro is with us now to explain. Tēnā koe e hoa. Thanks for joining us. Kia ora, tēnā koe. <clears throat> uh, firstly, just explain for us what you mean by the paradox of being Māori. Well, I guess, um, you know, to be or not to be, that's the famous Shakespeare quote, right? And um, you can't be something and not be something at the same time. But you'll hear people say sometimes, yeah, that, yeah, they're Māori, but they're not really Māori. And, and that's kind of the, the paradox, although it's not really a paradox because they're using the same words to identify different things. And so the first thing is about um, being Māori through whakapapa, and that's... Um, uh, you know, that identity of being Māori. So anyone who has whakapapa Māori is unquestionably Māori. Um, but the second way of being Māori is like by aligning through uh, to cultural values and principles and beliefs and practices of the culture and so on. And um, I don't think that we have a agreed upon term for the second thing. And mm. so we keep conflating the two things together. And that's why uh, it, I call it a paradox. And what was your thinking around preparing for your thesis? Where did the idea come from? So um, I'm studying in psychology. Psychology is full of statistics and not everyone really un knew, knows that. Um, but in statistics, people tend to compare Māori to non-Māori on whatever it is they're measuring, like well-being outcomes. And then they report those differences of um, being uh, higher and lower, and usually Māori being lower across the statistics. And, well, I grew up in uh, Kurakaupapa and Kohanga Reo movements, and so I knew from my experience that um, being immersed um, in Māori cultural practices and principles and belief systems was a strong foundation and a, and a protection. And so I wanted to bring that perspective into the research field and sort of develop a measure that can be used to really showcase this strength. Um, and so I thought if you could measure cultural connections to values and principles and practices, you can say, hey, actually, these findings aren't painting the whole picture and we need to look a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. um, but, but as I was trying to, to develop this measure, I, I, I ran into this paradox or this way that we've kind of mixed what Māori identity means um, between the whakapapa version of identity and, and I suppose uh, what I've termed embeddedness um, in terms of alignment to oh. those values, beliefs and practices of, of the culture itself. Now, as an example, you, spe you speak in your paper to the National Party electing Simon Bridges and Paula Bennett as their leaders, and being Māori, the media firestorm that ensued perpetuated this perceived paradox. On the one hand, both these individuals whakapapa to Māori, but may not have possessed the characteristics and values of being Māori of, say, Rawiri Waititi. How could your research help us to better understand these extremes? Well, I, I think it's mostly that um, it disentangles the confusion so that we're not using the same word, so we can be clearer about what we're talking about. We can say, yes, they are Māori, because they have whakapapa Māori, but they may not be very embedded in Māori culture, and, and I think that that's a perfectly reasonable statement to make, but it doesn't a attack on, on their whakapapa and their identity. Oh, oh. And it's more actually sensitive to the fact that not everyone has those kinds of cultural learning opportunities to be developed in Te Ao Māori because of the impacts of colonisation. Now, you've also said that there is some arbitrary criteria that constitutes being Māori enough is unhelpful and doubly marginalising through colonisation or opportunities. Why do you say this? Well, because it's very likely not their fault. So the ongoing process of colonisation has got in the way of people connecting to their culture. So the, the double marginalisation on the one hand is that being Māori in a Pākehā-dominated world, uh, in a Pākehā-dominated society, is the first marginalisation um, where Māori values and principles and practices and belief systems aren't prioritised. And then on top of that, if you have people who don't have access to that amazingness inside of the culture and the protection that it, it provides to us, yeah. then that's a second marginalisation on the top. Now, I get to work with many extraordinary people here at Whakata Māori who grew up in Te Ao Māori uh, with so much 
they helped me so much just by speaking the reo. I didn't really grow up around my iwi and unfortunately have little connection to, to them and, and, and the Māori world. What advice would you give to, to others in a similar type situation? Well, I think that um, one of uh, my go-to statements um, in comparing the difference between Māori identity and what I've called cultural Māori cultural embeddedness is that Māori identity opens the door to the marae, but cultural embeddedness is what happens when you're there and you get to see all of the amazing things that are inside of, of the culture and learn about them. Um, and the, cult, the concept of cultural embeddedness is an invitation to come and see and come and learn and come and grow in that um, space. And, and I know it's really hard, like if you don't have a way in or if you don't have anyone um, that you can go to, to talk to, to bring you in, um, that, that can be difficult. And also, I won't lie, if you do go there, sometimes you might get a, a growling from auntie, you know, for doing the wrong thing or being in the wrong place. But I think so what's really important is that that's part of that culture and it's part of the learning. And there's so much beauty in there. If you can just exercise a little bit of bravery and actively just look for opportunities to connect, then, then you'll, just, you'll just see and learn all of the amazing things that you can find yeah. inside of our culture. Beautiful. Beautifully said. PhD student Riddy Wai Fox, thank you so much for joining us today and all the best with completing your PhD. Ngā mihi kia koe. Ngā mihi. Thanks, Neil.